One is homelessness, <coughs> the other is refugee and asylum seekers, and the uh, last issue we want to look at tonight is older people. In reality, I suspect lots of those issues will start to collide. But that's the, the, the focus we're going to have this evening, and we're going to divide the debate into three equal sections. And the first of those is going to be homelessness. And John, I don't know if you want to start us off with our first question. Yeah, definitely. I think Mahinda might have answered this in his first, uh, his first minute, actually, which is good. At least you're all gentlemen. Um, the first question, this is a pre-prepared question that each of the candidates have been sent. There's one for homelessness, one for refugees, <laughs> asylum seekers, and one for uh, older people. And the question is, there are now 8,500 people on the City Council's housing register with a shortage of affordable housing in Leicester. There are real concerns about how we are going to provide decent and affordable homes to those in housing needs. How would the candidates address these concerns? Um, who wants to start? Rick, perhaps with your um, <coughs> introduction around housing, you could perhaps kick us off with this one. I think um, we have to be realistic. We have to be realistic in life to go anywhere. Let's say where these homes probably won't come from. They probably won't come from the City Council, except that the City Council can <coughs> work more efficiently. It can definitely reduce the number of voids and it can be more opportunistic in its approach. Secondly, they won't come from social registered landlords, housing associations, in anything like the numbers they have come in the past because their funding has been stopped or reduced in fairness. They're trying to find different ways to deal with their problems, but they're big problems. And I've done a lot of work with housing associations over the decades. What we have to do, therefore, is accept and acknowledge that the private sector is the massive provider of housing and therefore can be a massive provider of low-cost housing. I've been working on an initiative with the City Council for 18 months. I went to them and said, here are 450 units, not mine by the way, I act as an agent, not as a principal. This is what you, City Council, have to do for those 450 houses to be available to reduce your housing list. Uh, this is what's happened in Salford, this is what's happened in the West Midlands, this is what's happened in the London Borough. I won't bore you with detail at all, but basically the City Council has to take a head lease, land prices are at very low levels, contracting costs are at relatively key levels. If the City Council will take a lease, then you can, City Council, have these units for your housing list. Sadly, this City Council was unable to get their mind around it, but I believe that this is a massive potential area. And what I have undertaken to say is that within 24 months of being mayor, I will get 1,000 people off the housing list by that method. Okay. Thank you, Rick. We've got a clear focus there on better use of the private rented sector. Mahindra, I noticed that you wanted to come in at the beginning and I missed that. Would you like to, um, yeah, com like to comment on Rick? I firmly believe that it is the duty of the local government to provide housing to the people, those who are homeless. They have the fund. They got around about two billion pounds a year income coming in. And surely money can be saved and be channeled to build housing. There are so many properties empty, which is owned by the city council. There are so many properties empty, uh, privately owned. They can be uh, converted into the flats or cheap housing so that the people can have accommodation. I firmly believe that if I'm elected, I will look into that problem before anything else because we are the unity for peace and socialism is committed against the curse. We are committed against uh, the homelessness. We need to do something immediately, soon after the election. Thank you. Mahinda makes an interesting point about better use of empty homes in this uh, discussion, this, this debate. Do any, does any of the candidates have a, a, a strong view about how we can make better use of empty homes to address some of the, the housing issues in the city? I'll, I'll that yeah. because of course um, we had a project that was doing just that. The last audit I saw back in February told us we got something under 6,000 empty homes in the city. Yeah. Over 90% of those in the private sector. Um, when we were in control of the council, we had a project called Homecome, uh, which brought 
well over 100 houses back onto, uh, uh, on, onto the, uh, the list um, in just over two and a half years. Uh, that was a very simple project, cost the council nothing apart from some PR. Uh, because what we did was that we approached the landlords, sorry, the, the owners of my properties, and told them if they weren't going to bring them back into use, we'd CPO them, uh, compulsory purchase order. Uh, that usually got them back into the, uh, into the rented or the purchase sector very quickly. That project was brought to an end at the change of administration, um, and we've managed to build, I think from memory, it's 12 houses since that point. Uh, so, quite simply, there is the opportunity to work with the private sector to get real houses that are out on the street now back into use quickly and cheaply. And we've got to use a mix of systems to get this housing problem solved. Some with the RSLs of what they can do, some with the private sector, very, very few directly uh, with the councils because we simply don't have the cash. A mix of systems. Peter, have you got a, a view on this? Well, I wouldn't disagree with Rick's desire to see the private sector play its part wouldn't disagree with Gary's desire to get empty properties back into use. Both have their part in the mix, of course they do, but neither is a panacea. They will contribute, and they're right, both need to be driven forward. But frankly, the scale of homelessness, the scale of housing need in this city is not going to be met by those two approaches that are alone. The scale of what we've got one that needs a major drive by the council to bring land into availability for new development and to work with social housing providers itself if it can provide them, social housing providers if they can't, to actually make new homes available for rent because the scale of what faces us will only be addressed if we have those new homes available and we actually increase the housing stock very substantially by making both the land and the finance to build available. And the mayor is going to be uniquely well placed to lead that campaign. And I'll just digress for a moment to, just to make this point that the mayor is going to be more than just a council leader. The mayor is actually going to be somebody who can speak out, not just for the council, but for the people of Leicester, because they have that mandate to do it. And this is a classic issue <coughs> on which we need a mayor who is able to speak out effectively at the local and national level on behalf of the city. Yeah, yeah. Is Peter aware that, 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 that many social housing, housing providers are fighting for their own existence? Is Peter Salisbury aware, aware that it was Margaret Thatcher that sold off the housing stock? <laughs> it was Margaret Thatcher that did this, and your government is no better. I understand that Tony Blair has 11 homes, the cheapest of which is £900,000. This is not I, Labour. This is okay, new I, Labour. He cannot go bashing on about Labour. Because Labour is finished, it's a misnomer. I think, I think he was responsible when his, in his tenure he did okay. nothing about this. Just, just very briefly, I think, David, my record will show I'm no friend of uh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think no, on the issue didn't vote, you didn't vote. I think, every time I think on the issue of. Stay, think, you cannot sit on the fence any longer. Okay, Jones, I think on the issue of affordable housing in the city, we all recognise we have an absolutely key, critical issue right now with 8,500 people in housing need on a housing register that we need to draw a line on it and move forward with that. And how many homes does the Queen have? What, what I would like to do, before I open it up to how the other gents, does she need? Before, I, before I open it up to some of the other people, I'd just like to get a sense of what people in the audience think about the comments you've just heard. I think but, a lot of money is wasted by other things as well as that, what you just said. Yeah. A lot of money goes to these parks, things like this, yeah. All right, you need the parks and that, but all the rubbish you put on it, and the burn things, it's just a waste of money. Yeah. We've seen the flowers and everything. So this is about better prioritisation yeah, of what yeah. we use. Um, before I come to you, um, Carl. Picking up on what you said, there, there seems to always be application for planning permission to build student accommodation <coughs> in and around Leicester. Yeah. Even though there appears to be quite a lot of student property at low cost, low rent, with fully facilitated services, that's already unoccupied. Even today, in tonight's Mercury, there's an application being granted for another 610 units to be built. And also, prior to that, Jamie Lewis oh, yeah, Jamie has already Lewis. has wow. a 700 bed uh, or unit uh, application to put through. So, what are the candidates prepared to do to encourage properties that are deemed at the moment student properties that are empty? Time, what are they going to do to encourage that that criteria 
criteria is changed to reduce the hours in the S3 